Okay, today we're going to have a quick look at uh, a different game this time. We're going to have a look at Discworld Ankh Morpork by Terry Pratchett. Uh, this is a game by Martin Wallace, as you can see there at the bottom. Um, I've only heard good things about this game, so let's have a look inside and see what's, uh, what's going on inside the box. So, first of all, we've got a very nice glossy rule book. Uh, the artwork, as you can see, is incredibly fantastic. Nice looking uh, Discworld themed artwork that's not been skimped on. You can see an auditor down there in the corner. <laughs> see a picture of the game board there. Starting the game, playing the game. How to place pieces. The different special abilities the cards give. Uh, all the different personalities that are in the game, which I'll go through in greater detail later. And a little bit of FAQ. I mean, I, as you can see, the game isn't particularly uh, in depth um, because, as you can see, the rule book is very, very small, so it's very simple. Um, definitely, maybe a game for everybody to play, the entire family. Maybe good over, over after the Christmas period. So let's move on and have a look at the rest of the game. That's the rule book out of the way. We have the board, which folds out like this. Let's see if you can see just the bottom of it there. As you can see, very nice again. Got the va the values on it and stuff like that. Uh, no. Nice. Built around in sort of old and more porkian style. There. Nice board there. Easy to put away as well, actually. I I, I, have always, I often have trouble with boards. <laughs> so, let's move on. Right, so we've got some quick reference cards here. Telling you the basic stuff. Again, condensing down the rule book into these cards. There you go. Ah, goody. A big baggie full of pieces. There are four player types in this game, so you can have two to four. Um, we've got red, green, yellow, and blue. Also have some independent pieces. We've got things like the, de the uh, demon markers here. Uh, there's trolls as well. If you can find a troll. There's a troll. Uh, let's have a look inside. They're quite nice uh, little wooden pieces, very sort of old-fashioned nowadays, I suppose you'd say. Um, would have been nice to see some plastic pieces in here, but as opposed to that old-school feel, you want to go for a bit of wood sometimes. Um, yeah, nice glossy pieces, very hard-wearing. Not going to break at any rate. So yeah, nice big bag full of them. These right. These are the personalities in the game. Uh, what you'll be doing is at the start of the game, you'll be dealt out one of these cards, uh, and it will have a secret objective written at the bottom here. Uh, you will be working undercover, as it were, to try and fulfil your objective by the end of the game turn. So you've got Vimes, Veterinari. Everyone will know Veterinari if you've watched the um, the uh, Sky programs for Discworld. He's been in, I think, every single one of them, actually, but, uh, Lord De Word, Lord Selashi, Lord Rust, Dragon King of Arms, and Syrophase. Yeah. Quite nice cards there. Once again, very good artwork on top of them. Very nice. We also have a whole load more cards as well here. These are uh, location cards. Uh, a bit like in Risk, they give you a certain um, reward for holding them. They have a value on them and stuff like that, and a little bit of rules attached to them as well. As you can see on this one, maybe even get it in focus. Yep. So those are your location cards there. So you can play the Monopoly Man of Ankh Morpork, perhaps. These are sets of event cards. 
in the game. Let's see if I can shuffle who. That should be there as well. These are the more hardcore ones. Um, there's Death, for example. Written in capitals, <laughs> as it should be. But as, there's lots of different ones, all sort of harking back to the game. Uh, very much a fan service product, this. Um, but as you can see, at the top of these cards are a set of actions that you can do in turn. So in this case it would be draw a random event, do what is said on the card, which is here, remove one minion from the Unreal Estate, and then play another card, which is that one there. Death, as you can see, kills off a lot more, but you can build his house. <laughs> Uh, lots of different ones here that any fan of Discworld will certainly enjoy. See if we can find any one of importance. Oh, there's Adora. Ah, Mr. Tiatami. <laughs> but yes, these are the these are the like the more veteran cards. They'll be placed at the bottom of the deck. Then you'll have, on the other side, another set of cards, which we'll just get out of here. It's one of the things I can complain about is the box control, but never mind. Uh, we have the green ones. Now these ones sit on top of the, black, of the brown ones, and are slightly easier to do uh, cards. They won't cause as much havoc and stuff like that. But, uh, very nice once again. Great card art on it, all of these. Very nice. Yeah, there we go. Then we also have these, which are the random event cards. The dragon. But you have to be able to believe in dragons to have a dragon, I suppose. <laughs> Demons. Mysterious murder. Rolls, but not in the dungeon. Just normal trolls. Where's your random event card? These are all set to sit to the side of the game board. Then we also have these, which are money tokens. As you can see here, we've got some silver and some gold. Uh, you'll be trading those in in the bank to buy buildings and stuff and pay for insurance. Um, not bad, not bad. I like these that they were all coming on a pop out card. Um, very hard wearing, which is always nice. Maybe a bit, a little dull. Could have done with being a bit brighter, but uh, I like them. I like them. And also, something that you do not see in a game, especially a board game, very often, a D12. Now, I do recall that in the collector's edition of this, the dice is a little bit different, and it says 7.5 instead of 8. <laughs> um, I think that's right anyway, so I'm sure someone could correct me. But yeah, that's the, the context of the box. As I said, you play through with one of these secret personalities, placing minions, doing things on the cards, trying to win, but stop others at the same time. It's very important to know what everybody else is, could be aiming for. Um, as you can see here, Vimes, when the game, if the game ends due to the cards running out, then you win the game because you protected the city, basically. Veterinary wants to have minions all over the place, your secret agents. But yeah, it should, it, it's going to be a really fun game to play. Um, if you love Discworld, you will absolutely adore this game. If you don't love Discworld, but you love area control and secret schemes, then you might enjoy this. If you're a bit of a munchkinner, maybe. But, uh, yeah. That's Discworld for you. Uh, a pretty fascinating game. If I say so myself. Can't wait to give it a few a couple more games. Um, and there you go. Uh, next time we're going to have a look at uh, another one of the Fantasy Flight games. We're going to have a look at Runebound, I think. Um, but there you go. Uh, and... This time, we shall say, it's all because of sapient pearwood. Yeah, not dragons, because dragons don't exist. Sapient pearwood. There you go. Hope you enjoy this video, and uh, 
go out and get this game. It's amazing.